Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we take a job at a firewatch tower in the middle of an isolated forest, as we explore the story for the latest in anthology horror series, Fears to Fathom, Ironbark Lookout. So sit back, relax, and let's try to survive the horrors hiding in the eerie woods by night. May 12th. We step into the shoes of central protagonist Jack Nelson, a young man driving his way up to a summer job as a fire lookout posted at Ironbark Park, a large isolated forest in the Pacific Northwest. Jack's point of contact at Ironbark is site manager Mitch Scott. From text messages shared between these two, we are informed that the last lady who worked at the lookout didn't fare so well. Though, this is not elaborated on at this time, so we are left wondering what may have befallen her. Mitch sends Jack some information, including directions for where to park and which trail to take to reach the lookout tower upon arrival. Meanwhile, Jack has also been receiving text messages from his sister Kayla, who is a little jealous of her brother's scenic new job. Kayla has been out Ironbark Way before, and recommends a diner to make a pit stop at on the way should her brother get hungry. Apparently, they have the best burgers in town. Jack pulls up at the Twin River Diner and takes a seat. Here, he samples the fabled best burger and has a quick chat to some of the locals while there. When one of the locals learns where Jack is headed, he mentions how a few weeks earlier, three kids went missing at Ironbark, and no one knows what happened to them. Rumour has it that some kind of creature lives in those woods, and may be responsible for their abduction. The man goes on to add that a lot of campers and hikers go missing in that forest. Slightly uneasy, Jack heads back to his RV, and continues the long drive to Ironbark. Upon arriving at the park, Jack pulls up in the designated car park and heads over to the security booth to speak with his on-site point of contact, Park Ranger Billy. Billy seems freaked out, mentioning that he thought Jack was one of them, though he doesn't elaborate further on who they are. Billy hands over the keys to Tower 11, where Jack is to be posted, and opens up the gate to the Gold Creek Trail which leads there. Flashlight in hand, Jack collects up his belongings and heads into the darkness of the forest, navigating his way to Tower 11. Jack reaches the tower and powers up the generator. Now with working electricity, he is able to access the computer and swat up on his day-to-day -day duties. As well as keeping a vigilant eye open for forest fires, Jack is also tasked with monitoring the weather conditions of the area checking temperature, cloud formations, and wind speed. Once this information is collected, it must then be entered onto the computer database and submitted to park management for review. After doing this, a call broadcasts over the radio system from sister location Tower 12. Tower 12 is supervised by a man named Connor Hawkins, a no-nonsense lookout who takes the role very seriously. Connor instructs Jack to get a fire going immediately. The nights get cold at Ironbark, so lighting the wood stove is a high priority as darkness sets in. To light the stove, Jack must first gather firewood from the storage shed at the front of the tower, and then carry it back to the fireplace and light it up. With the fire lit and the weather report submitted, Connor bids goodnight to Jack and the two turn in for the evening. In the middle of the night, Jack needs to pee, and lazily decides to do it over the edge of the tower balcony. However, while relieving himself, Jack realises to his horror that he is being watched by a shadowy figure, standing on the trail below. After rushing for his binoculars, the sinister figure quickly walks away, leaving Jack unnerved and alone once more. We next catch up to Jack a few days later, as he sits enjoying the crisp morning air with a hot cup of coffee while taking some photos on his camera. Jack's peaceful morning is interrupted by a radio call from Connor, who explains that a group are illegally camping without a permit in the forest close to Jack's tower. Spot that white smoke up north? It appears to be in the lazy trail sector, which is not a registered campsite. People like that don't bother to clean up after themselves. Fire risks are high this season. Am I checking it out? 
Jack is asked to check out the campsite and tell the campers to pack up and move on. He sets off down the trail and eventually reaches the site by nightfall. As he approaches, Jack hears a bone-chilling scream. The campsite appears to be abandoned, with no signs of a struggle. However, the fire is still left and has been left unattended. With no idea when anyone is due to return, Jack scoops up some water from the creek and douses the fire, before heading back up the trail to his watchtower. In the back of Jack's mind, he couldn't quite shake the sense that something terrible may have happened to the campers. Back at the tower, Jack reports his findings to Connor, who seems angry and frustrated exclaiming that this is the third report of illegal campers this month. He explains how, ever since those three children went missing recently, the park has seen a rise in campers, all drawn in by the mystery surrounding their disappearance. I heard from the rangers that many campers have been flocking to that area lately because of the disappearance of those three kids. They were hiking with their families, they went off the trail and just vanished. No trace of them since. Their parents said some whistle led them off the trail. It's unbelievable. People have started spreading rumors that the area might be haunted by some entities. It's crazy, I know. Connor explains the rumors of hauntings in the forest are why the last lookout quit, and why Mitch was desperate to find someone for the position so quickly. He goes on to say that he hopes Jack doesn't believe in such tall tales. Connor explains he will notify the authorities about the illegal campers first thing in the morning, but for now, he bids Jack good night. After filling out the nightly weather report, Jack reads through the latest text from his sister Kayla, who has sent over the recipe for a lasagna. He decides to cook the lasagna for dinner, and after eating, he heads to bed. Jack is soon woken from his slumber by an eerie sound, that of footsteps creaking on the decking of his tower balcony. The shutters are down, so Jack isn't able to see who or what is out there though he glimpses the sight of a pointy head through the one unblocked window. Jack waits for whoever is outside to break through his door and attack, but the attack never comes. Instead, he hears the figure setting something down outside the cabin door, before slinking back into the night. With the coast clear, Jack opens up the door and is met with a horrifying sight. A cattle skull has been hung above a cluster of lit candles in a ritualistic manner. What does this mean? Spooked by the event, Jack immediately radios Tower 12 and wakes up Connor to explain the situation. However, Connor is none too sympathetic, annoyed that he has been woken up so early in the morning. He tells Jack it was most likely kids messing around trying to prank him. Connor promises to send someone out to Tower 11 to check in on Jack the next day. For now, he tells him to get back to bed and try to sleep things off. The next evening, while surveying the area for hazards, Jack is summoned to his room by a radio call, although for once, it is not Connor on the other end of the line. Instead, this is an emergency broadcast from a hiker who finds himself lost in the woods and has begun to panic. I went out to explore the area and lost track of time, and now it's dark and I can't remember the trail back to my truck. I think, I think I'm lost. Jack uses the park map on his computer to guide the lost hiker back to the trail intersection leading to his car. But then, something sinister occurs. The hiker begins to hear a whistling sound and spots a man hiding in the trees who he assumes to be Jack. When Jack warns the hiker that the person he has encountered is not him, the hiker begins to panic and then suddenly the broadcast cuts out. I see you behind the trees to my right. You're freaking me out. There is a knock at the door. Jack answers the knock to find Billy the park ranger standing on his balcony. The ranger hands over Jack's weekly food supplies and warns him not to go into the woods by night. We get the sense that this ranger knows more than he is willing to share. Jack tells the ranger about the skull he found left on his balcony, but the ranger explains that without any evidence, there is nothing he can really do, urging Jack to take photos of anything weird he may encounter in the future. 
After dinner, Jack heads down to the tool shed to collect up firewood for the night ahead. As he turns back to exit the shed, a strange man named Silas appears in the doorway, claiming to be a local maintenance worker. Silas claims to work on the radio towers, but he gives off a weird, somewhat creepy vibe. He makes the statement that some fires are meant to burn and no amount of prevention can stop them. He then goes on to state that disasters are another form of cleansing, a way for the land to purify itself. Freaked out by the oddly dark direction the conversation has taken, Jack bids Silas goodnight and quickly heads back to the top of the tower, firewood in hand. After lighting the stove, a call comes through from Connor, who asks where Jack has been. Jack explains his run-in with Silas for repairman, but to his horror, Connor claims that no such person works on site. Look, if what you're saying is true, it could be another one of those goons playing pranks on you. Do your name. You think he's been listening? Because the man knew Jack's name, Connor is worried that he has been listening into their radio conversations. He instructs Jack to take Silas's details and a photograph for evidence, as posing as an Ironbark employee is strictly forbidden. With that, Connor signs off for the night, and Jack heads to bed. One week passes by fairly uneventfully, and Jack has started to feel as though perhaps there is nothing to worry about in the woods after all. The computer system has now got a new security update too, which seems to have solved the issue of creeps potentially eavesdropping on private conversations between the towers. One night, Jack is woken by Connor, who informs him that smoke is coming from a campfire that appears to be in his sector. Connor asks Jack to take his binoculars and see if he can spot the exact location of the fire. Stepping out onto the balcony, Jack soon locates the fire, and when zooming in, witnesses a terrifying sight a satanic cult dressed in robes and masks, burning a body on a fire surrounded by candles in a ritualistic manner. Could this be the body of a hiker that just went missing? Jack decides to take a photograph this time in order to preserve evidence of this horrific crime so the activity of this cult, who presumably were responsible for the missing children and campers, can be brought to justice. As he snaps the photo, the entire group turns to look at him, and one of them begins running towards the watchtower. Jack hides under his bed as the masked man bursts into the room. Unable to locate Jack, the cultist begins to search for balcony, this giving Jack just enough time to rush downstairs and hide in the outside toilet. Peering through a gap in the door, Jack waits until the cultist heads to search the tool shed before finally bolting down the trail toward the car park. He manages to reach his RV and speeds off before his satanic pursuer is able to catch up. As Jack flees danger, he summarizes the events that followed. He drove to the nearest ranger cabin and radioed in to alert headquarters. Unfortunately, nobody believed Jack's story and when authorities visited the site of a ritual the following day, they found no sign of misconduct. The cult had moved on. Jack's experience was chalked up to be the product of isolation, too long out in those woods alone. Even Jack's family did not believe his story, but the events still haunt the poor man to this very day. Jack vowed never to return to those woods again, and warns any would-be camper to be careful if planning a trip themselves. And with that, we have come to the end of this video and a look at the story of Fears to Fathom Episode 4, Ironbark Lookout Explained. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it both entertaining and informative. If you did, remember to leave a like, comment down below, and of course subscribe for more horror-related content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.